Hey, Rant Riders, Keith Wheeler here back with another video for you. And today we're gonna to talk about word searches. But more importantly, we're gonna talk about word searches in shapes. And what that means is instead of just a boxed word search like you're used to, there's a software that just released today that's gonna to allow you to create word searches in different shapes. But I've also heard from you that when I do videos like this, you wanna know what's included in the different offerings, so in the different tiers. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna flip the screen around, I'm gonna show you how to create word searches in shapes, how to use this software, and I'm gonna show you what elements are included in the different tiers. So you know going in, if you decide to buy the software, which tier or tiers is best for you. So if you're excited about this topic and my ideas on how I'm gonna share it with you, then give that thumbs up button a smashy smashy. It lets YouTube know that this video needs to be shared with others. Okay, here we are on the website and I'm gonna go over here to uh, Shape Word Search Generator because that's the one we're gonna be talking about today. Access now, as you can see, I have access to all the different tiers. And again, I'm gonna cover what's included in each of the tiers. I'm not gonna cover pricing because pricing changes, but I am gonna cover what's included in, e in each of them. So um, we're gonna click on Access Now. And just like in a lot of these, you get this default collection. A collection is just a folder. It's a folder where you can start creating your book. Just think of each collection as your book. There's gonna be a default one. If you wanna create your own, you just enter in a name and click create collection. We're just gonna use this default one. And here is the main page. Now I will tell you, in the basic, in the, in the front end, the first one that you get, it's not gonna include some of these uh, options over here on the left. It's not going to include this language settings, and it's not going to include the uh, the done for you images. Uh, we'll cover that in a bit. And then right now, this is set to ten percent. I can go in here and I can zoom in to whatever percentage I want, but I'm going to leave it at this for now. And I'm going to click on this, and that'll just give me the default image and and uh, all the things that they have set up. I can go in and change all of these. So we're going to click on this. Let me put this on fit let's see how that looks and yeah, it makes it a little bigger now in a lot of these softwares that they offer uh, you you're not able to upload images in the in the front end off option the, the the number one the first one but the way this software is set up it's all about the images and so with the front end offer the very first offer you can still upload images so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this image right here and we'll go over here to uploads and i can upload my images I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna find an image. There it is, I click on that. I hit this little insert arrow and there it is. Right there is the image that I had. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Let's go to 25%. Okay, so you can see the, the letters in here and this is the word search, like that quick. Now, obviously these are the words that they uploaded. This is the default, so I want to include my own. So I can go in here and edit words. And these are the words that are here. I can go in and, and change these to whatever I want, or I can upload my own. So if I upload my own and I click save, and here's my list. Those words are in here. Now I can click on this. And if I don't like the way it looked, I can hit this regenerate and it'll change the letters around right here. Okay. So again, real quick, I've already made one page. Now, obviously I can go in here and I can, uh, that's the title I put but if I don't like that name, I can change it. I can go in here, I can change the font. Now they have over 900 different fonts to choose from. So it's just amazing the different options that they have. I can change the font size, I can change bold, italics, whether it's centered or not, all of those things that I can change. Now, if you look here, there is colors. That's something that is available in uh, one of the other tiers we'll cover in a second. But, uh, but yeah, so right there, uh, obviously, I'd want to remove this since it's not a cat, so I want to take out the meow days. There we go. So Animal Puzzle 1. Here we go. Now, there are a lot of different settings that we can address. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click in here. I'm going to go to Open Settings. And I'm going to show you just some of the things that you can do. Uh, I don't want to go into a huge di deep dive because, honestly, this video will end up being super long. And they have amazing tutorials within the, the system. So... Um, I just want to show you a couple things. So one thing you can do is, as you can see, there are different columns and rows. You can change the number of columns and rows to change the complexity of your puzzle. So if you want it to be easier, then you'll have less columns. So if you're doing it for kids, 
If you want it to be more complex, then you'd have more columns and more rows. You can also change the, the size of the cells. So each letter is within a cell. If you think of like uh, an Excel spreadsheet, you know, inside one cell. And so you can change that and that will make the whole thing kind of bunched together. You can change the font size. So in here is where you change the direction. So again, when you're doing it for kids, you know, you, you might not want them to be able to go backwards and, and diagonal. You might want to just do, you know, right to left and up and down. Those may be the only options. So you literally just go in here and click off the ones that you don't want to include. It's really that simple. So if I don't want to do bottom right to top left, that means if you think about that bottom right to top left means it's not only diagonal, but it's also backwards. So that would be something I wouldn't want to include in a kid's one. Again, if I want to add it back in, I just go to the drop down and add it back in. So a lot of flexibility. This is one that's going to be super important because when you upload an image, now to be clear, uh, right now when you upload the images, they have to be PNGs because there has to be some kind of opacity to it. And that's why is otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the, you know, the letters behind it. So we want to change our opacity so that way they can actually see the letters better. So we'll do that. We'll just drop it down to point five, let's say. We'll go down here, right here, where it says update word search. And as you can see, it's now become more faded out the image and you can see the letters better. So again, I can I can drop that even more. Let's drop that to three point three. There you go, even better. Other options are if you want to kind of tweak things, you can add in grid lines right here just so you can kind of see how everything looks. I'm going to turn that back off. You can also change the grid line width. Now, let's see, one thing that we talked about uh, in previous videos is how to adjust for complexity. And another way that you can adjust for complexity, if you want to make it more difficult, is you can actually, these are called your clues, these are your words, you can hide them. So right now it defaults to showing the clues because the majority of the time you're going to want to leave them in, but you can actually hide them. So then people have to just, they don't know what the words are that they have to find and it makes them have to look even harder to find the words. I'm going to put that back on because like I said, the majority of the time you're going to want to keep them on. All right. And there's some other features you can do where you can like, you know, change the, you know, instead of this being centered, you can change the X and the Y axis for you know, shifting it over a little bit, but not exactly, you know, left justified, right justified, uh, li little tweaks like that. These are all suggestions that, that their beta users asked for. You can change the font size of these letters. You can change the, the spacing between them. You can change the letter spacing, the number of columns right now it's in three columns. I could change that to, you know, to four columns or two columns, depending on how long the words are and, and how many words you have. Again, so much flexibility that you have within this. Now, when you do sorting right now, it defaults to being lexical, which is alphabetical order. You can change that to be in order of length. So all the long ones will be on top. Okay. And then as they go further down, the words are uh, shorter in length, or you can have it randomized. Okay. Where it's not in any particular order. Now, if you're doing it for kids, typically you're probably going to want to put it in uh, in alphabetical order, and that's why it's the default. But again, you can change it. Uh, capitalization, obviously, as you can see, it defaults to being in all lowercase, but you can make it uh, uppercase, or you can make it capitalized, which means that first letter is going to be capitalized, and the rest of it won't. So again, flexibility that you have with it. Again, you can decide whether you want a left justified, right justified, or centered. If you want a border around it, click on that, and there's the border. And that's pretty much the the settings that you have. Uh, we can scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can show the solution if you want, update that, and that'll show you, you know, this is just for, for you to test it, to see how it looks. Again, if you don't like the, the way the words are, you know, where they're located, again, you can just go up here like we, I showed at the beginning and regenerate, super easy to do. So uh, like I can just regenerate this and it's going to move those letters around and therefore the solutions will be moved around as well. All right, we'll turn that off and there we go. Let's scroll back up here. There was one more thing I wanted to show you. So right now, these letters are in uppercase. If I wanted to turn that off, I can turn it off and they'll be lowercase. Okay, so again, it's a preference. Uh, default is what is normally used, but again, you can always change it. So now when you're ready to download, you can actually click on download and you'll see you have 
Um, you will for the for the FE, the the front end offer. You're going to have options for PNG, JPEG, or PDF. Uh, PPTX comes when you get to the next level, the the next offering. Let me go back over here. I want to show you one more thing that we have access to, and that is grayscale. Now, right now, obviously, the image is in color. Many times you don't want to include color because that'll make the price of your book go up. And so you can just click on grayscale. And as you can see, it has now made it grayscale. So the image is no longer in color. And so again, instead of you having to take it to a different software and do all that, you can do it all here within the system. And the other thing I want to show you, which is right next to grayscale, is this refining factor number. Um, if you see some of these letters may be like outside the image, you can tweak that number and it will make the letters further and further outside the image or closer and closer together. Um, so uh, it, it'll help you, uh, well, like it says, refine it. Four is the is the default, but you can always adjust that. So as you're going through your, your pages, doing a, a quick review of it, if you see like, for example, down here, if these number letters were down here a little bit, then I want to adjust my refining factor. And again, there's a whole video within the system to, to talk about that. Now, one of the big things that I wanted to point out with the front end offer is that you are limited to 100 downloads a month, which sound doesn't sound like a lot, but you need to keep in mind that a download is not a page. A download is wh whatever you download. So if I do an entire book, an entire 110 page book, and then I download it, that's just one download. So if you only end up getting the front end offer, which is still a huge deal. I mean, every, most of the stuff I've shown you today, unless I stated otherwise, has been just in the front end offer. If that's what you decide to get, you wanna make sure that you are as close to final with your book before you download it. So you're able to, to use those 100 downloads that you have a month as sparingly as possible. Now, real quick, I wanna show you what you get if you get the second offer. It's also called it's the pro version. So the first one is FE for front end. The second one is pro. In the pro, you get unlimited downloads per month. So you don't have to worry about that 100 limit. You also get the option that I showed you over here with downloads where you download the PPTX file. So, you know, if you download the PPTX file, maybe you can add in a title page or other things that you want to add in within the, the you know, the, the PowerPoint file. So you have that option. You also have the options for all the colors that I that I showed you, you know, so like if I type in the letters here, you know, that color there, if I go in here and I go to settings and I scroll down here, uh, the letter colors, the border colors, if I put a border around it, all of these colors right here, text color for the, for the answers, all of those colors come with that second offer with the pro, but the big difference, the, the to me, the game changer, and this is what's going to make this product really stand out, I think, and also make it so you can create more books in a lot less time. And that is the bulk option. I'm gonna go up to bulk clone and I'm gonna do this shape word search clone. Now they might change the uh, the name of this cause it really isn't a hundred percent clear what it does, but let me show you the magic that this thing does. I'm gonna click on here. And remember before I was able to upload an image. You know, when I use the, the front end, I could upload an image and that was gonna be my puzzle, right? Well in here, I can upload multiple images. And there we go. There's all my little cute little soccer animals that I've got. And I could, if I wanted to sort or I could group them together, I could do that here, but I'm just gonna click apply. And then this is another feature that we have within the pro, which is the bulk text uploader. So uh, you can upload multiple files, or what I did is I just have one text file with the different words in it. So I'm just going to click in here. And if you do it in one text file, then what you do is you're going to go in and uh, within, in between each group, you're just going to put a space. It's really that simple. And the system will read that and the spaces will show up as a different list. So there we go. So we've got soccer puzzle one, two, three, all the way to 10. Again, if you add a hundred pages, you could do this as a hundred. Now let's say you're doing this for kids and you don't want as you can see, the total words are 10 in each. And that's just the way I set it up. Yours might have more, but let's say that you want them to be consistent. So maybe each list has 20 words, but you only want eight words to show up, which is what's right here as the default. I can click on this chunk and it will actually break it down to where there's only eight words in each one. 
okay? And it takes the extra ones and puts them, creates new word lists. So I'm gonna go back to the 10, which is what I had before. There we go. So there's my 10, 10 puzzles. But again, you could have 100, whatever. And then we're going here. Now, let's say that you'd maybe you didn't generate these words. Maybe these words were generated by, I don't know, some AI like ChatGPT or something like that. You can click in the process words and there's an option to remove duplicates. Now, I made this list so I know there's no duplicates in it, but if there were, I could click on this, or if I wasn't sure, I could just click on this and it would remove all the duplicates. If I wanted to you know, sort randomly instead of the order I had them in. All these different options that we have. So I'm just gonna go create puzzles. It tells me right here that the bulk clone is initiated. And there we go, it's done. So if I scroll down here, so here's the first one that we did, right? The animal puzzle one. But if I scroll down, puzzle two, and so on. Again, just by by quickly clicking in there and doing that 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 bulk upload, that bulk cloning. And so again, that's on the pro version, not not the initial, that's on the pro. But I mean, you can see how you could literally knock out in a matter of minutes. You know, you do you get the images, you get the word lists ahead of time and have them already in a folder and then you literally just go in and if you have the pro or or one of the other ones higher than that and you could just do this bulk cloning and have an entire you know 50 40 100 whatever page shape word search book all done within a matter of minutes the next tier that they have is what they're calling premium and this is if you want to take your business to the next level and it's one of these other things that i talked about over here and that's the language settings so in that tier, and this one I want to talk about just briefly, but in this tier, you get the availability to create puzzles in seven different languages. Okay, so so yeah, it, you might be selling word search puzzles in the US and in other English speaking countries, but what if you wanted to do Japan? What if you wanted to do Swedish, German, French, Spanish? And even even if you're not just talking about like in Spain, I mean, people in Canada, some people in Canada speak French, you know, some people in the U S speak French or Spanish or German. So again, just another option. This is the, uh, the third tier that they have. It's called premium. And I wanted to point it out specifically because during the, during the launch, you know, starting today and the launch goes for four days, it ends at 1159 PM on May 8th, Eastern standard time. During that time, you pay one fee for it and you get access to all seven languages. Now, when the price goes up after the after the launch, you can still, it, obviously the price is gonna go up, but you, you can still get those seven different languages, but you also have the option to pay on a per language basis. So if there's only one language that you want, then you can pay the, the one lump sum just for that one language. So it all depends on what you need, what you want, if this is something you're interested in. But again, I wanted to make sure that I pointed that out. What Elite is, is that's the done for you images right here. So this option will be available to you if you get the Elite. And uh, it's it's got borders, it's got you know all these different images. And as you can see, like this one, uh, I can click on this and it just gives me uh, just a ton more. And these are images, so you don't even have to go to create a Fabrica or deposit photos or whatever to, to, to find the images. You have unlimited commercial rights to these images. So, uh, so yeah, those are, I mean, it's in 10 different niches, it, more than 10 niches, over a hundred borders, over three, I'm reading, I got the little notes over here, um, over 300 premium quality illustrations, all included. So, um, and again, unlimited commercial rights to these images. So, uh, to, to use in your puzzles, that's everything that's, that is available. Obviously there were so many different things. I didn't show you all the nuances, but they do have tutorial videos to, to explain each nuanced option uh, in, in much deeper detail. But again, I wanted to, to give you more information than what maybe some other uh, people are giving you or, or what I've given in some of my other videos. I know a lot of you have asked for more uh, detailed information as to, as to what's included in the different tiers. So uh, I will be honest, out of all the software that I've looked at uh, over the years, this one is one of the few that gives you a ton, a ton of options and, and features all within the the first level, the, you know, the, the first front end option. And uh, yeah, so again, that second one, the pro, that's the one that, that has the bulk upload and uh, unlimited downloads 
and the colors, you know, the, the different color text if you want to do that. So if you want to check this out, you can go over to Keith Wheeler Books slash SWPG, which stands for Shaped Word Puzzle Generator. So Shaped Word Puzzle Generator. So kwheelerbooks.com slash SWPG. I'll also include a link down in the description. So what did you think of that software? How excited are you that you can actually use this software that easily to create word searches in different shapes? This will be good for not only kids, but doing word searches for adults, especially when it's themed. You know, we talk about niches. This is a great way to take your niche and dial in it even more into shapes within your word searches. Let me know in the comments what ideas you have to use this software. And are you thinking about using the international option? You know, the different languages. I'm excited to hear who's gonna be using that as well. You know what else goes good with word searches? Mazes. So you check out this video right here that I'd done a while back where I introduce you to Instant Maze Generator, created by Naranjan, the same person whose team created this word search generator as well. Now, if you've already seen that, or maybe you're not interested in doing mazes right now, YouTube says that this video right here has got your name written all over it. I'll catch you in one of these videos, and remember to write right.